And no, we're not going to always make the right choices. But if God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son, and He loves us like He says He does, we need to be in prayer and supplication about what we do every day. Not just a traveling tip, but every day. You know, I leave my house when I come to this radio station. General, this is a peaceful valley we're in right now. But I leave my house... And I'm, I'm prepared spiritually and physically to get back to my peaches. You, you understand what I'm saying? Whatever it takes, I'm prepared to take different scenarios. If, just let's just say they all of a sudden put up a roadblock. They just decide to start it today. I'm mm-hmm. prepared to avoid that center of town and take a back road if i got to take the long way home and it costs me more diesel, at least I got home. Rather than trying to go on and just go on to death and destruction, I'm prepared to get back to my family. And that because you know why? God gave them to me, and they're my responsibility. And we had better, like you said earlier, we had better stand up and take personal responsibilities, number one, for our lives in, as individuals, and number two, for our families. My God, you know, me and you was talking about this the other day. Whatever happened to a real man with intestinal fortitude and a spine that's straight and would stand up and be men? These men have become pansies and sissies. It's almost yeah. as if they need to sit down and pee. Castrated, Billy. Yeah, they've been they've been they've been spiritually and physically castrated in the spirit in the spirit realm, and they, and they're more feminine than the women are. Well, you know how your friend Killakami from Ami feels about that topic. You could. Woo! <laughs> I might need to get him. I might need to get him on. God willing, this show continues that I've got here. And you know, there's people that need to hear him speak on that biblically with you biblically because you know something. Emotional manipulators fear. Guilt, shame, and humiliation and anger can push some men's buttons to where they just are meek and they're weak and they let them out to pretend to be men and then they put them back in, back in the closet and make them just be submissive. Oh, yeah, and I had, there was a lady called in two, about two weeks ago, John and myself were sitting here and I just sat in with him for a few minutes. We were doing that, getting that rally ready to go and, and she called in. She said, look here. You women need to let men be men again. And I agree with that 100%, but it's partly the man's fault because rather than confronting the issue and dealing with it and working it out, he'd rather just not even deal with it, you see. And that's that's pathetic and weak and anemic in my book. Oh, hell, Billy, give give some of us uh, the football's coming up, college, NFL, NASCAR, anything, a home improvement project. You can stay busy doing nothing and just get in your own little self-contained world and you gonna and you won't know to rise up and take care of your family and and I'm obligated and you are too to take care of your family. Absolutely that's our that's our first and foremost obligation. All these other things, the first time, if you want to do it, do it. I, I put a, a thing out earlier. I don't sit there and watch sports. Somebody wants to watch it, that's their business. I, I got to be about, number one, the father's business. And number two, I got to be about making sure that my wife, my kids are protected. They had the wherewithal to uh, to have their, their needs supplied, okay, physically as I can supply them and spiritually as the Word of God supplies them. That is my most important thing. And, and everything else is, is just put on the shelf. And if I... If I have time, like I told them, to go bird hunting or deer hunting, I'll go. But I'm not going to let my bird hunting or my deer hunting get in the way of protecting my peaches and taking care of my home front. It just ain't going to happen. You're talking about distractions now, Billy. That's easy for a lot of American people to be distracted, not just men, any age. But the adults have to have the accountability and the duty to be more responsible and, and filter out distractions of various types. And that includes arguing and bickering over nothing. Oh, yeah, I mean, over just penny any garbage. And, you know, just think about this. You and I have talked extensively about some things that went on as far as me being a contractor in, in Georgia. Yeah, I told you the other day, and I'm going to say this, and I hope John ain't mad at me because I ain't took no calls yet, but I'm, I'm going to get to them calls, Mr. Stokes, I promise, but I want to get this out. You remember when I talked to you the other day when I do this two jobs, and I won't mention where it's at for the sake of my protection and th- this, that, and the other, but you remember I told you I did that one big house, and then uh, I got a phone call that the other house needed to be ready in 25 days which is unheard of in this United States. But in order to keep my credibility and my integrity, we did it in 24. I had all the millwork. At the time I hung up the phone with this person, I started calling my millwork man, said, you got to pull this. Started calling my cabinet man. I started calling my subs. We went to work in 17 hours a day. But I had an obligation to keep my integrity and show that, hey, I am a man, and we can pull this off. Number one, with God's help. Number two, with all my teams and all the subcontractors getting together, getting in line, and we did it in 24 instead of 25 days. And I want to tell you something. The Bible says all things are possible with God in the physical and the spiritual. But what we've got to do is all these distractions have got to be put away. They've got to be put away. And once you have got everything ready, and by the way, we never get through actually getting ready. You're still working. I'm still working on stuff. And we occupy until the Lord comes. It's always something to do. 
do. There's always something to do, and the man's responsibility to take care of his family, there's always something to do. And that don't mean that you can't enjoy life while you're doing it. But we're living in a staged, critical instance that could possibly, on this curve, come around, and it could possibly, it could possibly make them be so sorrowful how are they gonna sit there and eat that remote and that television? That ain't gonna go to that ain't gonna digest too good and it sure ain't gonna come out the other end too easy because both these remotes, my goodness gracious. They can have my remotes if it tastes good. I'm, they can have all the remotes and TVs. If they can come get them, I'll give them to them, but they're not getting my food. Amen. Praise God. Me and you both, brother. They can have all the televisions, just like they did in Louisiana when they robbed Walmart and this, that, and other, the looting of Katrina and all this, that, and other. And, and how stupid is that? When they, If I'd have been looting and I didn't have nothing, I'd have been looting for food and not no daggum big television and some daggum brand new Reeboks, unless, of course, they was running from the flood. But I won't get into that for the sake of time. But these people better wake up and realize I they don't to hit something, Billy. I want to hit something that's very important. You go ahead. To remember, I think it was almost what four years ago, about this time, or a little. Uh, well, it was in August, what 2005, when Christina hit. You remember the hype watching the hell and destruction, the drownings, the deaths, and this, the deplorable, uh, the conditions, and when the sanitation backed up, and people were huddled up all over in where they could find high and dry ground. The violence that broke out. And by the way, they let Blackwater XC down there without any constitutional authority to be walking around with Class Three and semi-automatic weapons, policing what? With no authority, constitutional. And they let it go. They let it go. FEMA was set up all along from the mid-'80s as enforcement, not to help you. They, they do help at times in natural disasters. But the, you saw the show of force. When FEMA came charging through with the guard and you saw the drama unfold, I promise you, Billy, if we enter into scenarios of critical or major critical incidents, you will see a similar aware, most likely they will allow this to go to justify it to the, to the people that have their head up their ass and are submissive to this cruelty and evil and unconstitutional form of government elitist and wealthy bankers and the UN, you will live to see it in your lifetime most likely that repeated on a larger scale. And that will be the people, if it happens in another part of the country, you, I'm going to say possibly California could collapse financially, socially, and politically. I hope it doesn't, but they, if they go, the rest of us are going to go down with them. That's the eighth or ninth uh, economy in the world. But that, look at it, Billy. Could you see it now with FEMA and DHS and the U.N. jumping out there similar on a higher heightened scale? If you're on the East Coast or somewhere, you better consider locking and activating your response plans and getting your peaches back and everyone that's in your unit back to the safe or relocate at that time, if whatever your choice and contingency ops are, because if it happens in one region, they can unlawfully Lock it down, and if you see this in a large city, Billy, this is something I meant to say earlier. You got me fired up. <laughs> more, more. The briefing continues. Absolutely. If the people in the cities see domestic and foreign and law enforcement assets, air and ground, and in some cases you may see naval capabilities on the waterways that can sustain them in the seaways and the oceans. That's a given. But if you see the Navy pull out their assets at Norfolk or San Diego, and it's not training. I would get a little concerned if they weren't being deployed to something else. We'll have our, our meddling in the Mideast or some of the location, most likely. I would be concerned, Billy, because that would they would pull their assets out and fighters and bombers off the Air Force bases, and they would get the Abrams and the Bradleys and their, their troop personnel out of a given area if they knew it was going to be hit with a weapon of mass destruction. Mm -hmm. But if you're, let's say you were back in Atlanta, we're not picking on Atlanta, but you, you're close enough to know Atlanta. How concerned would you be if one of your friends in Atlanta called you and said they had a, a, a mobilization and deployment around Atlanta because they had a, some death or, or a sickness from the biological outbreak, and they noticed that the tanks, the butt of the tanks was facing the city while the cannons were facing away from the city. They had pulled the, the choppers back. The personnel was back, and they saw the uh, biological response units from the feds and foreign as well, or let's say even the nuclear or the chemical response units in the area. I would tell you most likely that's not play. 
it's no time to panic but i would start considering